right, friends? Well, you saw that uh, FedEx just came. I'm in the middle of working on my deck. Got all the weed barrier laid down. 54 by 26 feet. Deck is gonna be uh, 24 by eight feet. That's half of it right there. But let's go see what we got in the box. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Well, I was set up around the corner, but it got too windy. Not too windy for my microphone, but it got too windy. It blew my camera over. Fortunately, I caught it. These uh, things are from the Jesper company, and it's the first time a company has sent me two of their products to compare them and see which one I like the best. This one is a jump starter and it's a more powerful one than I've uh, had before. This will start up to a 10 liter diesel. This is an 8.3 liter diesel and the other jump starter I have will not start it. It takes too much juice, but this one, it will do the job, they say. This will not start the motorhome, but it will start any car, and it's got a built-in air compressor to blow up your tires. Let's get them unboxed and see what we got. Jesper. Nice uh, semi-rigid case. This is the big jump starter that'll start a, a big diesel. Ah, still compact. What do we got? Uh, USB out. 5 volts, 9 volts, or 12 volts, and uh, out 5 volts, 2.4 amps. So the smaller one will be for charging your phone or your iPad, and the other one is a quick charge port. And then it has a uh, in or out USB-C. And what else we got here? Uh, USB to USB-C charging cable, jumper cables. Why did I not show you these jumper cables? Because when I found out that these kinds of things exist, I threw these ones away. And we have a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter style plug that plugs into this so that you can use it as a power supply. And how about the other one? Jesper. Oh, it's small. Jesper, 200 amp. 150 PSI air compressor. Nice display. Oh, the cord for the air compressor screws in there. A uh, package for uh, blowing up other things like uh, volleyball, basketball, football, and of course the jumper cords. Again, why carry around the big jumper cords <laughs> when this will do the job and even better? As a matter of fact, this replaces the jumper cables. This 
replaces the other car you'd need to hook it up to. Jumper cables, other car. Something else in here. Oh, the charging cable for it. Again, USB to USB-C. Well, I'm going to read a bunch of directions, make sure I know how to utilize these things. And uh, we'll see what Jesper can do in terms of starting my car. Let's go do some tests. Looking at the condition of that battery. <laughs> Looks like I might, <laughs> uh, I might need uh, one of these jump starters sooner than I thought. If I'm out there off-roading in the boonies. Yeah. Well, this wouldn't be a good test unless it's a dead battery, and it's not a dead battery. So I'm going to take the positive cable off so that there's no battery in effect. And then we'll see if the Jesper jump starters will start the Jeep. So I have the uh, positive cable of the battery unhooked, which means that there is no battery in the car. First, let's try the X1, Jesper's model that has the built-in air compressor. Positive on the red cable, negative on the black, and there's a little button you gotta push down here. It says boost. It's right there until you get a green light Got the green light. And a running Jeep. Now let's try the Jesper Speed 4120. Red on the positive. Black on the negative. Hit the boost button. Got a green light. Nothing wrong with that. We actually do have a dead battery on the ranch. It's down in the barn. Let's go see if it'll work. Hey, this is the test to make sure the battery's dead, which we know it is. <laughs> You're doing it and nothing's happening, right? Nothing right. Okay. Uh, dead. Yeah, battery's under the seat. It would turn over before. Well, it's not starting. We have the Jesper X1 with the built-in air compressor. We've got the negative hooked up. And now we have the positive hooked up, and I have to hit the little boost button here. Um, we got a green light. Go ahead and try it. I still think you ought to buy a new battery. <laughs> so, if we're gonna use the air compressor, we have to set it. So this one is the mode button here. And right now it's set for bar. That's for uh, pounds per square inch. So that's what we want. And it's set for uh, 44 if we want it to go Lesser, how many? You don't need 44. Oh, it's going the wrong way. You don't need 44 in your lawnmower tire. You probably need about, it skipped and went to 140. You need like about 30, okay? And we're going to set it for 30. We're going to put it on there, push it on the mount stem, lock it 
it down. Right now it says zero. Yeah, that seems about right. Three, four, five. Oh, it's up to ten, and I'm reading on the tire. It says nine. I guessed at 30, but it says 9 on the tire. Yeah. Okay, well, we're up at 11. You've got a little extra air for the next time. So I'm going to edit the video, and you call me back because you decided you're actually going to mow some yard. I put a little gas in the tank, <laughs> and the tank's leaking, and I'm just going to use it up. So the first time was demonstration. Yeah. This is for real. Yeah, yeah, I want to burn the gas out of the tank, the little bit of gas I put in there. <laughs> okay, get off the seat. Don't shut it off until you're ready to park it. We've had fun trying out these Jesper jump starters today. Uh, they've done everything we've asked them to do, but I think they're even more capable than we've tried. Uh, I'm going to read you the specs on the back of this one. The name is the Speed 4120, model YJS40, battery capacity 88.8 .8 watt hours, that's 24,000 milliamp hours. Starting current, 600 amps, but the peak current, 4,120 amps. The D8 battery that starts my big uh, diesel engine in this motorhome uh, has uh, 1,750 cranking amps and 1,400 cold cranking amps, and this says 4,120 amps. Lithium batteries can deliver. We already know this. It's highly unlikely that I will ever use this to start my RV because I have a lot of redundant systems in a 40-foot diesel pusher. I have three battery banks. I have a 7.5 kilowatt generator. Um, solar, it's highly unlikely that all of my redundant systems for starting my engine, I even can uh, preheat it if it's cold <laughs> with my furnace. Not likely I'm going to need this for my RV, but it's nice to have it because I have a lot of RV friends who don't have all of those things. Most RVs have a button on the dash. You push it and it, you can use your house batteries to start your car. But... Uh, a lot of my friends have converted vans. A lot of my friends have school buses. They don't necessarily have all of those integrated things. So uh, I'll be happy to have this in my RV to help my RVing friends if they need it, even though I'll probably never use it to start this RV. And of course, you, if you've watched my videos for a while, you know I've got friends with tractors and road graders and bulldozers too. And got a big truck. This will start it. Now the other one, the X1 with the built-in um, air compressor, 200 amp jump starter and 150 PSI. Let's see what else it says on the back of it. It's a model X1. It has uh, 12,000 milliamp hours, 44.4 watt hours, uh, peak current 2,000 amps. There's something about this I want to tell you. Now, the flashing, that's just uh, video taking an LED. It doesn't flash when you're looking at it. It's got five buttons here, uh, on and off button there on the far left and on the far right, uh, a light different modes of the light. Uh, this one also has the same light and same modes in it. The other three buttons are for the air compressor. And what I want to tell you is that this is marketed worldwide and most of the world is on the metric system, not our uh, United States system. 
So we're used to pounds per square inch. But the default, when you turn this on for an automobile, and it goes from automobile to SUV to basketball to bicycle. And for each of those different things, it has a different range of air pressure. It goes from uh, 0 to 150 pounds per square inch. But what I'm telling you is that when you turn, first turn it on, it defaults to bar. And the native uh, um, pressure measurement in this machine is KPA. That's um, kilopascal. This is not a deal changer, but you do need to learn it just one time what uh, your pounds per square inch for your tire is in bar or KPA. It's not hard. Listen. Hey, Google. What is 33 pounds per square inch in bar? 33 pounds force per square inch is equal to 2.275 bars. So this comes on at 2.4 for bar, see? And then these other two buttons are for raising or lowering the pressure that it's set at, to where it will stop when it gets to that pressure. The other uh, pressure measurement is KPA. Hey, Google. What is 33 pounds per square inch in KPA? 33 pounds force per square inch is 227.527 kilopascals. 227 kilopascals. So um, the range on this is from uh, up to 990, I think it said, right? KPA. Seems like a capable air compressor. But... Uh, that is something that uh, here in the United States uh, doesn't make any sense to us, bar and KPA. Just thought you ought to know that if you're thinking about one of these. Actually, am I thinking about one of these? Well, we started out saying that I'm supposed to decide which one I want. Do I want this one with the built-in air compressor? Seems pretty handy. Or do I want this one which would actually start a huge diesel engine. This one or this one? What's my choice? I think you know what my choice is. Both. This one's going in the Jeep and this one's going in the motorhome. Special pricing and discount codes for my YouTube friends. Check the links below. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.